My name is Christina Varaksina. I'm a portrait, fine art, and fashion and beauty photographer. Today I'm going to be doing specifically portrait and fine art type of shoot. With this shoot, I'm hoping to tell a story about becoming a mother, how it transforms a woman and how it brings this new life to the world. Show it in a less conventional way, so not a typical maternity shoot where it's just focused on the glamorous aspect, but uh, with the color palette, with the lighting, create a more sort of artistic interpretation. This softness of the moment, but also uh, this transformation that is happening. I'm shooting tethered, and I like seeing if I shoot on location or in studio, it doesn't matter. I like seeing my pictures on the biggest screen to just see them bigger, analyze if all the details are in the right place. Um, so shooting tethered is very important. Uh, this is a Fujifilm camera, GFX 100S. It's a medium format camera. Currently using is a 45 millimeter lens, which is uh, about 35 millimeter equivalent on a 35 millimeter sensor. So it's a, it's a wider angle lens. And I like the depth in the picture that it creates. Even though it's portraits, it's not an obvious choice for as a portrait lens, but I really like having that depth and the, the distance between subject and the background. And I don't mind having a little bit of that wider angle distortion, which only helps me create more dynamic poses. Most of the models to get like a very strong distortion. So it's something that I'm very used to and I like uh, playing around with. Uh, as my key light, I'm using this, just this one strobe with a um, diffuser in front of it. So I have a transmitter to control it. I can obviously adjust the intensity of it. And since I'm trying to overpower the daylight, uh, this strobe is currently set to, uh, you know, closer to its highest setting. I think I can start with describing my career with my childhood. I really like drawing and specifically drawing portraits of uh, people around me. Usually it's you know, people who were very important to me, like my parents, my family. But I always liked photography as a way of capturing the moment, capturing the feeling and capturing an essence of someone. The way it started, it was always around people. And then I, I was doing a lot of fashion and beauty. And lately I've been focusing more on more of a conceptual fine art portraiture. I love doing portrait photography because it allows me to connect with people and tell also their stories through an emotional component of the shoot. Uh, let me show you the whole concept and we'll just chat a little bit about the mood and everything, and then you can go and change. One. So this is kind of like the whole idea. So it's very like new kind of color palette, very natural. And I wanted to create like, not like a typical maternity shots, but more artistic, more fine art. And so, um, like very soft body language, soft lighting, soft, soft everything. I think with like something like the, like this would be nice. Like we can start with like sitting. You can wear a bra, and then you you are more free to move around and pose. I'm gonna put up a curtain like that. You know this kind of uh, style. So we're gonna see your silhouette through a curtain and maybe like I do some cutouts, maybe for just your face and the belly as well. Translating their emotion and the background of who they are through lighting, through props, through color. So there's a little bit of that magical storytelling that I do through my own means, uh, as opposed to a documentary photographer who just follows uh, what's already there. I get to create uh, and you know, build up those elements that would tell the person's story and reflect their personality and their feelings, their emotions. So I have a very simple canvas backdrop, a very simple setup for for to create that very soft uh, window light kind of effect. So I have this um, 
six by six or two by two meter silk uh, with a frame. And so it's set up a little bit higher, um, pointing slightly down. So it's not a really a 45 degree angle, but it's still, it's still a little bit angled down. And then on this side is uh, what I'm doing with these two pulleys and I'm controlling the shadow ratio. So I wanted to have a very contrasting shadow um, on the other side. And this poly, I'm actually going to try both ways. So if I turn it like this, it's going to act as a fill. The shadow is not as strong. Um, we have more detail on the other side. And then um, if I actually want more contrast, And I want sort of more dimension, more separation between the light and the shadow on the face, build that light around her. So this will be just moving all the time. Then I have a couple more polys on this side. Just like this, find, find the best angle. So the beam of the light will be more narrow, more focused more directional towards the model. And so, and I can adjust this exactly where it's going to be. It can be any flag and it doesn't have to be this big, but I'm working with this polis today and uh, it works out fine. I can find a position depending on, again, like where the model is turning, how she's sitting, um, how the life is shaped in her body. So I'm going to adjust this as well. When I plan a shoot, it usually begins with an overall direction. I just think, you know, I look inside myself and I think, what is the feeling that I would like to express? Maybe there's some particular thing that is on my mind a lot lately. Something that I want to kind of let it out and express, you know, all my strongest emotion about something. It can be a reflection on what's happening in the world. It can be very global, it can be very personal. It doesn't really matter, but as long as I have that kind of strong feeling and strong, a strong urge to express it, that's usually where it starts. I know it's kind of vague, but then I start like thinking more about it and I, I can think of um, what kind of color palette it can be, what kind of lighting, what kind of shapes and textures, all these elements that can translate this mood and the story. I think painting and sculpture gives me a lot of inspiration. So I, I, a lot of times I start there and see if any art piece uh, stands out to me as this feeling that I want to express. Or sometimes it works the opposite way. I know the exact story. I know exactly what kind of person it should be. Almost to the pose, this is how they should be posing for the camera but I will still find some references from paintings, but also through, through photography, uh, you know, what color palette, what textures, what lighting. So usually my mood board consists of at least three pages, just um, my first page exploring the overall direction and feeling. Then it will be more specific to poses and lighting, to props and set design and things like that. It can just go in, on and on with uh, styling and hair and makeup and all the details. Is she moving? Yeah, mine started kicking a couple of weeks ago and sometimes it's so strong, I didn't expect it. <laughs> yeah, that's beautiful. I really like working with table setups and putting my models to sit on top of the table. I let them find their comfortable position. So they probably can put their hand and um, put their legs together and things like that. To me, it's a re very respectful way of portraying someone. Today, I'm going to wrap the model uh, with these fabrics, different ones. I think building your career as a young photographer is not an easy task. Obviously, we all face an enormous amount of competition. What can help you uh, stand out and be as authentic as you can is to really understand who you are as a person, which also takes a bit of time to figure out. So you shouldn't be too harsh on yourself. 
But if you understand what really drives you, what your passions are, and try to bring them into what you do, express yourself through your work. Obviously, when you're starting young, you have to shoot whatever comes your way just to uh, sustain yourself. So, of course, you need to take any jobs coming your way. You can assist, you can find ways to support yourself. But keep in mind that even if you do take some jobs just for the money to sustain yourself, just keep on developing your portfolio on the side. Keep it to, to yourself. You don't need to release it yet. You don't need to show it to the world yet. And then just keep building your portfolio towards it until you're ready to start showing it. And you can show it to photo rep agencies that will help you reach out to higher profile clients. You can start reaching out to magazine editors. You can start reaching out to art directors, creative directors, art buyers. But I would encourage you to wait until your portfolio is, a, is at a really good level other people will also see it. So I would suggest to not try to fake it and mimic someone else's style. You know, look internally, but don't become a fashion photographer just because it looks very interesting and nice if you are not really passionate about the fashion itself. Be honest with yourself and express who you are. And I think that's what gets appreciated by other creators, by other people who make hiring decisions. Yeah, and you will stand out. When it comes to post-production, I'm very particular with what the look I want to achieve with my images. I usually take quite a bit of time just to figure out the initial direction. I can look at some references of something that I want to achieve specifically. I start experimenting. I usually just take, a, you know, select one of the best shots in the whole story and I just take that one shot and start playing with it and it can easily take a day just to figure out the overall look that I want but then it, it, it becomes very easy to apply that whole set of adjustments to the rest of the images so I start usually with tonal adjustments playing with the curves dynamic range levels adjusting the contrast adjusting the softness of the image or adding more contrast reducing contrast protecting the highlights opening the shadows things like that. With this particular shoot, I'm going to make it even softer. Also adjust the color palette a little bit. Play with the model's skin tone, overall color palette of the background, the lovely natural canvas colors, and just to add a bit more of a color grading to the overall look of the image. Maybe play with some film kind of looks. Try to find the balance in color between the shadows and the highlights. It's not an overall color cast, but it has this kind of separation uh, in color between different parts of the dynamic range that gives depth, more depth to the image. These are the things I normally do and, and do it usually in Capture One, um, but then I do my final steps in Photoshop, just a, a clean up of the background and the model skin or hair, like or small things if it needs to be anything adjusted or cleaned up like that. One of the main reasons why I decided to become a portrait photographer is because I'm genuinely interested in people, hearing them, getting to know them, hearing their stories, learning about, about them and uh, uh, their life. So we've just wrapped. The shoot went really well, I'm very happy with a variety of shots we were able to achieve in this very short period of time. Um, the model was great, really beautiful, really feminine, but at the same time, very strong and powerful. Uh, played around with some lighting adjustments, different setups, different positions. Um, so very happy with those, can wait to see and edit them. So thank you so much for watching, for following us, and thank you very much to Wex. And um, remember to check out my Instagram, my website, if you want to see more of my work.